A. This is a addressable, 7-segment, RGB display. It requires only one data pin from the microcontroller, along with VCC and ground pin, to control many of these displays. While each one of them can be addressable, individually. In this way, we can cascade any number of displays, as we want. As you can see here, I have used header pins to connect these displays with one another. The output from the first display, goes to the input of the second display, and so on. In this way, all the LEDs are connected in series, making a daisy chain formation. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay is one of the largest PCB manufacturer from China. They provides high quality professional PCBs of various kinds, such as aluminum PCB and flex rigid PCBs. Besides PCB manufacturing, they also provides PCB assembly service. And all of this for really low price. I mean, only $5 for 10 pieces prototyping PCBs, and $30 for PCB assembly service with free shipping. The build quality looks really good to me. Silk layers and surface finish are also just perfect. Thank you PCBWay, for such beautiful boards and amazing service. By the way, if you want to get the same PCBs as mine, then I will leave a link in the description, from which, you can directly purchase these boards, from PCBWay. Let's assemble the board. I have used WS2812 BLEDs of 5050 package. There are 7 segments in the display, and each segment has 2 LEDs. Therefore, 14 LEDs are required, per digit. These LEDs are very heat sensitive. Overheating might burn the plastic cover. So we can't apply heat gun directly onto it, and hand soldering all these LEDs is very time consuming. Therefore, I have tried a new method of soldering here. It's called hot plate reflow soldering. Only difference is, that I have used regular clothing iron for heating. And to my own surprise, it actually works. In this method, heat is applied from the bottom of the PCB, which melts the solder paste, and join the components. The iron temperature is around 220 to 230 degrees Celsius, which might takes a while to melt the solder, but it does the job done. Okay. This is how it looks after fully assembled. There was however a little problem with the headers, which caused the displays, not align properly. But by removing the plastic brackets from the male headers, solved the issue. To drive the display, I have used a Node MCU board. Let's connect the power and data pins of the display, to the Node MCU, and turn it on. Now let's see how the program works. This is a sample sketch to test the displays. The code is very simple, and I have commented it for better understanding. You can download it from my GitHub account, link is in the description. Here I have defined the number of LEDs per segment, the number of digits, and the data pin. This is how the pixel arrangement for the display. This defines all the segments and its position. This defines all the digits. This function clear all the pixels. Then we have some functions for different actions. You can comment out or uncomment any of this, as per your choice. 
This function shows all the segments in a loop. Then we have this function to display all the numbers across the displays. Then we have two functions to count up or down any given number. For example, here we have set the number to 456 and this is the delay time. And finally, we have a function to show some animation. In the next video, I will make a custom driver board for this displays. So make sure to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to get notified. As always thanks for watching.